All righty. How's everyone doing? Everyone's excited for the last day at KubeCon? Hopefully we didn't stay out too late last night. I know some of you were having a little too much fun. Uh, <laughs> But <laughs> some good little parties last night. So, uh, you know, as you're aware, we've been doing kind of a, a themed uh, day thing for KubeCon this year. So uh, today's the last day, and this kind of community-oriented uh, is kind of the theme, you know, reflecting and celebrating some moments. It's been 10 years of Kubernetes. We have a lot of fun things to talk about uh, today about our community. So to kind of, uh, you know, kick things off is uh, we've been super fortunate as a community to have a lot of organizations out there uh, contribute uh, people and resources to ensure that our projects could run in a variety of different environments, you know, different clouds, on on-prem systems, et cetera. So uh, today we're gonna start off with uh, uh, a new organization contributing uh, something special to CNCF to ensure that our projects have more resources on it. So to kind of kick things off, uh, I'm gonna go hand it over to Ari from uh, Akamai to talk a little bit about what they're doing. Thanks, Chris. Yep. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> That's a little bit better, thank you. Well, listen, over the last decade, developers have been forced to choose between two evils, either accept big cloud's complexity, costs, and lock-in, or struggle and lose precious time by building everything from scratch. Like code itself, it was a binary decision until this week when we made a, a choice and we made an announcement that would allow us to choose a different path with the Akamai app platform. We created a platform that balances the simplicity of the cloud and the control of open source, and we built it on Kubernetes. <coughs> Sorry. It ensures genuine portability for workloads at scale, giving businesses the freedom to move applications between cloud environments, and with that freedom comes increased cost efficiency and protection against vendor lock-in. The app platform makes deployments easy, using open source to accelerate time to value and ensure flexibility. With the click of a button, Developers can deploy pre-configured upstream CNCF projects from CI-CD to observability to security. And a catalog of golden path templates streamline how developers build and deploy their applications. It's an example of Akamai's commitment to open source and the CNCF community. We're proud that our employees participate as TAG co-chairs and our developers actively contribute to projects that help businesses and developers scale their applications. We've also pledged a million dollars to help projects scale their operations. This includes projects like Flatcar. Akamai has made upstream contributions to the Flatcar community and are investing to qualify Flatcar as an officially sponsored platform on the Akamai cloud. And now that Hyperlight has been announced by Microsoft, we're super excited to give it a try on our platform and see what the community thinks. If you haven't used the Akamai cloud, or if you knew about Linode before, and you wanna see how Akamai has been investing to expand our cloud platform with exciting new products like the app platform, then I encourage you to sign up for a free account and give it a try. But to hear more about Flatcar, I want to bring Andy up. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Ari. And uh, thanks very much to Akamai as well for that amazing uh, donation of resources to the community and uh, to the Flatcar project. And it, it really is great to hear about uh, Akamai's use of Flatcar. Um, and they're not the only ones. Today, Flatcar is supported in practically every cloud and on-prem platform. And we're thrilled that the community momentum behind Flatcar has been recognized by acceptance into the CNCF at incubating level. For the community, this means that for the first time, we can deploy a complete production environment, including the operating system, using all CNCF technologies. Thank you. Flatcar is a natural fit with the CNCF because it's designed specifically for containers and embraces cloud-native principles like immutability and declarative config. But the world isn't standing still, and neither are we. We're evolving Flatcar to enable users to customize it and adapt it to the next generation of workloads. You remember the Burger King Have It Your Way campaign? Well, that's the approach that we're taking with Flatcar. With system extensions, you can build your own choice of layers on top of the base OS image to simplify cluster API worker image creation or enable deployment of new workload types, such as WebAssembly. I'll now hand over to Rita Zhang to tell us a little bit more about those kind of workloads. Thank you. Uh, and Andy, you are absolutely right. We want to run WebAssembly 
and many other new technologies in our cloud native work while still ensuring that they run securely. Virtual machines have long been the cornerstone of cloud native infrastructure, widely trusted to securely separate host and guest environments. But for event-driven scenarios like serverless, traditional VMs are simply too slow to spin up. So how can we reduce this latency while we run our application securely? Introducing Hyperlite, a Rust library built to allow developers to leverage KVM or Hyper-V to run untrusted code in a micro VM without loading a full operating system. And these VMs can be created in microseconds. Here in this demo, we have an app making sequential calls from the VM to the host, then returning values from the host back to the guest. Hyperlight creates a new micro VM for each call and averaging just 900 microseconds per request. Now, that's microseconds, one, less than one milliseconds. Finally, I'm thrilled to announce that today we've just pushed a pull request to donate Hyperlight as a sandbox project to CNCF. <laughs> we invite everyone to check it out, explore it, and I can't wait to see the innovative ways that you will leverage Hyperlight in your own projects. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Rita. So, um, you know, one interesting thing uh, about our community is, uh, you know, it's very, very large, right? You know, Kubernetes is turning, you know, essentially 10 uh, this year. It is really the second uh, highest open source velocity project behind uh, Linux, which is 33 years old. It's got a, it's a little, has a little more age on us. Um, but, you know, it, it's truly evolved very, very, uh, you know, quickly. And uh, our community is extremely vast uh, and global, right? You know, we do a bunch of KubeCons uh, all over the world and meet people all over the world and try to get them uh, trained and up to speed on, on cloud native uh, technology. Um, you know, as part of this, we have a uh, great report that uh, we've put together, kind of celebrating uh, Kubernetes turning 10 and talking to both users, um, you know, uh, maintainers, and so on, and kind of sharing how they've benefited from uh, Kubernetes during the last uh, decade, or so, decade or so. So you could take a look uh, at this. Um, you could take out this, you know, wonderful uh, report that we put together, take that little uh, QR code to kind of get full, uh, full, full details. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned, uh, you know, truly one of the largest global open source communities uh, out there, uh, spanning 100, uh, you know, 93 uh, countries, over a quarter million contributors. And I've had this, uh, you know, job basically since the beginning of CNCF, and I've have traveled all different parts of the, you know, world. And, um, you know, one of my kind of favorite, uh, you know, trips uh, I've had was uh, up in, uh, uh, Lagos in, in, in Nigeria, meeting some of the you know African uh, community that we had out there, and it was definitely a fun uh, experience. You know, meeting some of our ambassadors out there, learning what's happening out there, and um, you know, I was definitely inspired and thought that we could do uh, a lot more uh, out there with all the passion that I saw. So I'm happy to uh, uh, introduce uh, a new partnership that we're launching, and I want to introduce uh, Ross next from Andela to talk about a little bit what we're doing to ensure that Cloud Native continues to be uh, global. Here you go. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Um, Africa is a young continent with the fastest growing marketplace. Many have a desire to be certified in Kubernetes and other cloud native technologies, but it has been a cost prohibitive. On, other, on the other side of the marketplace, when clients uh, submit a job role to us, the desire for someone in Kubernetes skills are 90% of those requests. The demand for Kubernetes is strong. Um, so we have reached out to CNCF to see if they would like to partner, us, partner with us on a learning program. We are thrilled to announce that CNCF and Andela would be providing KCNA and CKAD training and certification to 20,000 to 30,000 African developers kicking off in 2025. This will expand the reach of Kubernetes and other cloud-native technologies. Okay. 
Thank you, Ross. I'm truly excited. It's uh, super fun. We have a, a, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, we have a growing community uh, that is in Africa. We actually have a KCD Ghana coming up, but um, you know, we have about 800 community members out there, and things are kind of continuing to grow. So I encourage uh, folks out there, uh, you know, take advantage of this program and continue to uh, make Cloud Native uh, global. So. Going to make a couple more announcements before we kind of kick uh, things further off today. So uh, a big investment, you know, in CNCF has been trying to train more and more developers to get up to speed on Cloud Native. And historically, you know, obviously we had a large focus on Kubernetes because that was our first project. That's kind of where a lot of the initial resources went. But as CNCF has grown to over 200 projects, we have other very, very large, you know, communities out there such as Prometheus, Envoy, OpenTelemetry, and so on. So Recently, we've been investing a lot to bring new training and certification out there to kind of meet the demand of folks that are wanting to learn skills outside of purely Kubernetes too. So I'm happy to announce that we have a few new uh, certifications that are uh, coming out you know, today. We have Backstage, which is a, a lovely, uh, you know, world's, I think, largest open source IDP. So we have a new certified Backstage Associate exam. We have an Open Telemetry certified uh, uh, exam, which is the second largest project behind Kubernetes in CNCF, CNCF and we have Kyverno. Uh, associate that's available in beta. So we're continuing to kind of develop these things to kind of make sure that folks get skilled uh, out there. And I'm very, very excited that we're, uh, we're doing this. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. <clears throat> we have some new cloud native programs too. So uh, I'm sure many of you are aware, you know, day one there is a big platform engineering theme. So uh, we're working to work with the community together because, you know, I I find platform engineering a bit of a nebulous top topic, depending on which company or person you talk to may have a bit of a different opinion of what that means. So what do we do best in CNCF? We congregate people together and work on you know, things and improve things. So we're all gonna work together on creating a new uh, certified cloud native uh, platform associate thing to help kind of define what, uh, what essentially platform engineering is from a cloud native perspective. So if you're interested in kind of participating in this and helping shape uh, this program, there are some QR codes here. And then uh, also we're launching an academic uh, accreditation program um, in beta format. Uh, a lot of times I've had the fun experience of visiting universities and academic institutions all over the world and sometimes the big complaints you know, we hear uh, from companies is, you know, students aren't really being trained on open source software properly or they don't only cloud native. So our goal is to partner with universities and help them adopt uh, cloud native focused curriculums really to prepare both uh, students that are attending universities on kind of their next, uh, you, know, you know, basically give them solid skills they need so they could be useful uh, when they start off their career. So check that out, that's in, that's in beta. Also, yeah, thanks, thanks. <laughs> so the other thing is, you know, every KubeCon we always give out discounts for training for attendees, so check that out, you'll get an email. I don't need to spend a lot of time on that. So, <laughs> I know, my, mar my marketing team will, will hate me. But uh, so what I'm really excited about is, uh, you know, we're a global community. We're starting to do KubeCons in new places. So this is, uh, we're doing our first KubeCon in India coming up in a few, uh, few weeks in Delhi. So December 11th through 12th. Very, very excited. Please uh, join us there. Uh, we're going to have a great contingent out there. I will say uh, book your ticket uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks because it's on track to sell out. So I'm very excited. Uh, about that, and obviously our next uh, KubeCon Europe that we're going to do is going to be in London. Super excited about that. Uh, CFP is open till November 24th, so please uh, submit a talk uh, there. It'll be April 1st through 4th, and I'm looking forward to it. It's, that one's on track to be our largest KubeCon ever. Um, so 2025, we're going to get some KubeCons. I'm trying to give all you all this in advance so you can mark your calendar. So we're going to have KubeCon London. KubeCon China is going to be in Hong Kong June 10th through 11th. Uh, KubeCon India 2025, our second one is going to be in Hyderabad, August, yeah. <laughs> I know, people were upset about Delhi. We're going to move cities like we do and uh, things. Hyderabad is next. So, uh, And then uh, North America next year is going to be Atlanta, November 10th through 15th, which is one of my favorite little cities. So hopefully we'll see, there, uh, see folks there. And finally, um, we're kind of combining uh, our security events. We had Cloud Native Security Con before. The OpenSSF also had its security event. We're going to combine this into a new open source security con that will uh, premiere and debut at KubeCon uh, Atlanta next year. The other thing to kind of start wrapping things up is, um, you know, 
We get a lot of requests for doing new KubeCons all over the world, and I'm happy that we're gonna be announcing and expanding our uh, KubeCon events to a new region in the world. So we're gonna be doing KubeCon Japan for the first time next year, June 16th through... <laughs> So there's a strong, uh, there's a strong uh, little bit of anime fan contingent in the Kubernetes community, so I'm sure they're very, very excited uh, about this. So hopefully we'll be able to see you all in uh, Japan next year. We have an amazing cloud native community, Japan community uh, out there. Other reminders. So 2026, uh, KubeCon has gotten so large that we have to kind of book these things out further in advance. Um, KubeCon uh, Europe in 2026 is gonna be back in Amsterdam, March 23rd to 26. I love the Rye Convention Center. It's gonna be back in that same beautiful, sunny uh, convention center. And then uh, in North America in 2026, we're gonna be in LA, October 26th through 29th. So uh, book your calendars, we're, we'll be back there. And finally, to kind of close things off, um, we do this annual survey every year where we wanna get feedback from all y'all on how, you know, which projects you're using in CNCF, what challenges you're facing. So take that QR code, it takes about 15 minutes or so to fill out, uh, and then we're gonna go share those results with everyone hopefully early, early next year. So a uh, little bit over time, but I truly wanna thank everyone here that you know, comes here and trusts us to you know, teach you a little bit about Cloud Native and uh, you know, really, really I hope you find uh, this event uh, something that you could kind of come back to. You know, from my perspective, helping organize this, all I really want people to do is, look, learn something new, make a couple friends, and if you do that, I'm super happy uh, that, and, and that's kind of what I think KubeCon's all about. So thank you for attending, and we'll kind of get the program moving. So thank you all, and let's, uh, let's get going.